Okay, this is going to be my basic intro to Radium. Uh, first of all, what is Radium? Radium is a, a sampler that's integrated with this version of Soundminer. Um, we can go back to like 2006, and I had created a simple VST sampler, um, just allowed you to load up one sound, reverse it, and play it over the keyboard. I think it had an ADSR envelope, um, but it was quickly apparent back then, I mean, it's going back 14 years, I don't think I had the programming skills or really the drive or the inclination to make a sampler. Um, but over the years, obviously, we've gotten tons and tons of requests for people that want to have something that's integrated into SoundMiner, just because it's it's so tough usually to get sounds from your librarian software or even from your hard drive mapped onto a keyboard, you've got to worry about, oh, okay, what's my sample rate? Is, is it mixed sample rates? Do I have to downsample? Do with those kind of things? Anyway, um, so fast forward to 2017, and I was hanging out with some clients, and they brought it up again. And I thought, well, let's give it a shot, see how tough it could be. And it's kind of just turned into this big monster. So I'm going to give a quick overview here. So on the left-hand side, you can toggle this open and closed. Uh, you've got five slots. And what is a slot? So a slot allows you to load a sound or multiple regions within a sound into a slot, and they'll all play simultaneously. So let's, um, I'll just shrink this down, let's see what we've got here. Okay, we'll grab some hits. So I'm just going to grab the left channel. I can make a selection if I want to, but in this case, I'm just going to load it as is. So I click load here. That's now loaded the sound in, and it's got quite a bit of space, so I could truncate that. If I decide I, I want to get rid of that. There we go. Uh, you've got your, your gain for this slot. Uh, of course, everything is very velocity sensitive on the keyboard, on the MIDI keyboard, and you can change that globally as to what it's like. This cheap little keyboard that I have, if it's linear, it's really terrible. You've got to like really whack it to get some sound out. So I tend to use a super compressed. So uh, obviously you can play a sound anywhere on the keyboard. It's multi-timbral. It will show me all of the voices that are currently playing. And now let's purposely make the sound click. So I'm just going to pitch it down a few octaves. So it clicks at the end there. So you've got a little control here that's fade. And you can click and drag, or you can just use the mouse wheel. The mouse wheel does like really fine increments. So you can see it's drawing a little gray fade on there. That just means if I hold this key down now, I'm not going to get a click. It automatically does a fade out. Um, then, of course, you've got your normal attack, decay, sustain, hold, and release envelope. So the attack is just, let me just change this back up to normal. That's just how long it takes for it to reach full volume. Your decay is the time it takes after the attack um, for it to reach the sustain level. I'll get to all that stuff later. Um, and then the release, this one, this one will be useful. There's always a little bit of release on a sound. If I turn it off, you'll see. As soon as I release the key, the sound goes off with a long release. It just keeps going. So there is usually a little bit of a, I think it's like 0 0.1 or something, is the default. So that's what that does. Um, the pitch bend area, that's if I had a pitch bend wheel on this controller, that would just be the range that the pitch bend hits. So that would be plus and down one octave, so 12 semitones. The lag is, it's a, a bit of a slide. So if you're really like moving it and jerking it around, it will slide into the next value, it just smooths out some of the parameters. And the tuning, that's for the sound. So normally, if I hit C, it's going to be playing the sound um, at whatever the regular pitch is, but I can like tune it down an octave, tune it up, semitones, cents, which are very, there's a hundred semitone, hundred cents in a semitone, 
And then ratio, what ratio does, normally on a keyboard, if I hit one key and then go an octave below, that's going to be 50%. That's going to be twice as fast. So the ratio allows you to control basically the temperament or what the, the, the spacing is between each of the keys. So in this case, I've got a very small keyboard. If I wanted to have micro, micro tuning, so it's not really a semitone now, it's got probably, I don't know, maybe like 50 cents between each of the sounds, I could do that. If I wanted to basically have no key mapping, I could change the ratio to zero, and no matter where I play on the keyboard, it's the original pitch. And the original pitch can be set here under the root, so it's normally C3, you can set it there. There's also, you can go the other way, let me just change that back. Um, if I wanted to expand the keyboard, so this is, so again, this would be an octave. If I increase this, that's now way more than an octave. And this all becomes useful when you start layering multiple sounds together, because you can use the tuning to sort of get the sounds to sit in together, um, and then the ratio just as far as how it tracks. And even though I, I briefly talked about the, the root note, what the low and the high note does is it's saying what range on the keyboard will this sound be audible. So what you would do, or what you can do, is you could throw a thunder um, rumble on this slot, and then a lightning crash or something on this slot, and then have the thunder mapped across these keys and the lightning on these ones, and then you could be like thunder, lightning, thunder, lightning. So that's what that does. Uh, some of the other controls, you've got reverse, and this will move the starts and the end points as well, so you can see that. So basically reverses the sound. If this was multi-channel, I could flip this, the, the channels around, so left becomes right, right becomes left. And then recall sound, this is cool. So I'll just move off the sound. And if you remember, I just grabbed the left channel. But let's say I, I decide, ah, it'd be nice if I grabbed it in stereo. I could go, okay, it's cinematic hit 025.wave, I could try and find that. Or I can just click recall sound, and it will recall the sound if I had done a region, it would show me the region that I marked, as well as um, pitch, if I pitched it into the sampler, and what channels I've picked. So I just, I'll just undo that now. This was buggy a little bit. Let's see if it's, it's fixed now. So I hit load. There we go. So now I've got the sound in stereo. And then other options, you've got looping. So I'll turn that on. We'll just go forward looping. And you've got to set your loop start point. You can drag these guys around as well. So it will start from the start point, it will hit the loop point, it will go to the loop end, and then go forward, 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 and then when you release the note, it will start playing the release. So that's what that does, and then you've got all kinds of other modes as well, like backwards. And forward, backwards, which is always fun. So that's looping. Um, the amplitude things, okay, let's talk about that really quickly. So think of this as like clip amplitude automation. Um, so why don't I load up a better sound to demo this off of? Okay. No, elephants in the room, this might work. Okay, awesome. So in this case, I am going to mark a section of the sound. I'm going to choose just one channel. And I could click load. I could go to the sampler menu there and load it into a specific slot. I've also got it assigned to this MIDI controller number. So if I hit this button, it then loads. So there's my sound. So let's say I this little squawk at the end, it's too loud. So I can draw in basically an envelope like that. You can hold down the Alt key. Is it the Alt key? Yeah. Oh, I'm controlling this on a Mac. There we go. So you can adjust the the curve of all your points. I only mentioned the Mac thing just because I, I've had to remap some of the, the key commands around what my Alt key is and what my Start key is. Anyway, 
So that just allows you to really draw in how you want the sound to play volume-wise. And that's assigned to that sound no matter where I played on the keyboard. So it's always going to hit that portion or that automation at the same point, even if I do multi-timbral stuff. So why don't I just like, for demo's sake, I'll just cut out that last little bit. So you can hear that no matter where I play it, that automation is now locked to the sample. So I can turn that off, uh, go to pitch. Now the same thing, but now with pitch. Now this was another real good reason as to why the sampler kind of came to be. Always got tons of requests about people like, I just want to be able to draw like a pitch in. How cool would it be if someone could just have like a pitch envelope? So this allows you to do that. Same thing, I can you know, do my curves. I can zoom in as well using these, these pucks. Or I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then I can just drag this little bar to see inside so I can get more finer detail. Okay, so that's kind of a bit wacky. But that will do. And then also down here, you've got effects. And these are effects that are per slot. So you can individually add, say, like a ring modulator to the sound. Turn it on. And a flanger. Just crank the rate up and the feedback. Pretty rocky. Now, if I load another sound on top of this, Go to slot two, find another sound. Okay, we'll just again grab the left channel, I'll load. Turn the volume down. It's just so you can hear that the effects on this channel don't affect any of the things on this. And on this one, we'll throw a chopper effect on. We'll do this. So hopefully you can hear how, I'm not good, I hate the word organic, but it's just so nice to be able to just quickly hear how the two sounds are going to play against each other by adjusting pitch. I can even draw an envelope on this one. And I've decided this is too wacky. There we go. So let's say I really, well, actually, before I do that, I should say that these effects, you can drag to rearrange them. So if I want to have, I'll solo this, some reverb. Oh, sorry, put the reverb on the wrong one. Let's do reverb on this one. Yeah, we go, I'll get there. So I've got reverb, so ring modulator feeding into the reverb. If I put the reverb feeding into the ring modulator, completely different sound. So the order that you put things in is obviously important. Um, okay, I'll just turn, what should I do? Turn that off. Let's do this. So let's say this is my masterpiece. I love it. So I now click the record button and now it's waiting for me to do something on the keyboard. As soon as I hit my first note on, it's recording. So I'll hit it and then I'll do some performance things, you know. And now when I'm done, I click stop. I'm going to, the next little thing, clear all the slots. So that basically clears absolutely everything that's inside the sampler. And here is my sound, my masterpiece. And then I'll just turn my camera off for a second. You'll see down here, there's an option to click. And that's the Radium RA88 uh, icon. And this would only show up if this was the same computer that recorded the sound. So let's say, you know, I've had did the sound off and they're like, oh, you used way too much flanger. Can you back off on the flanger? I'm like, oh, I don't even know what sounds I used. So 
So by clicking on this, it will say, do you want to recall the embedded radiant patch? I'm like, yes. So then it goes through, it recalls the original sound, as well as all the effects that I used. And of course I can solo. I can, I think I should be able to recall the original sound again. Yeah, same thing. So if someone said, ah, it was cool, but can you grab it in stereo? There we are, load it. Now everything should be the same. Just now I've got that sound in stereo. Um, so that's the recall. And again, that only will happen on this machine. If you were to send that sound to someone else, they wouldn't be able to do that. They would also have to have access to the source sound files as well. So chances are that's not going to happen. Um, OK, let's clear the slots again. We'll go to the Cartoon Slack library here. OK, these ones are pretty cool. Let's see if we can find something. Yeah, so it's managed to auto-identify some of the regions. For what I want to do, this is good enough. Um, so I'm going to use the key command, which is Shift R, and that's now created uh, radium regions. Now what I could have done is I could have individually gone through each one, and then hit R, and it will capture a region. And now when I load this sound in, you'll see up at the top, there's a bunch of regions there. And what that means is when I hit a, a note on my keyboard, it's going to randomly pick one of those regions to play. Oh, let's get my back into tuning. And it won't go past that region, even though I held the note down. So they're just playable little regions. This is really useful when you want to build multiple variations of a single sound. So you could layer like a gunshot and a ricochet or something like that, or a bullet ejection. And it will randomly, on each of the layers, pick a different sample to play. So that's what radium regions do. And I can do this for slot two. OK, I'll just grab. Well, those are, those are bright. <laughs> OK, so same thing. I'll capture all the regions. I'm going to load it. And I'm going to set this one as a release trigger. Now, what a release trigger means, I'll just mute this. When I hit the note on my keyboard, oh, helps if I put the camera back on. Nothing happens until I release the note. And then it's going to play the entire uh, sample. Now, some people have said, oh, it'd be really nice if you could have a separate ADSR envelope for the release trigger. Well, you can. All you got to do is turn your sustain down. And then you could do things like increase your delay or your decay. So if you want that to be short with a little bit of release. There's other ways around it as well. I'd sort of jump ahead, why don't I? Um, there's a thing called a time-specific envelope for amplitude. So this is much like what I did up here with the amplitude that was tied to the sample. And that's that's important to note as well, actually. Yeah, B bouncing around a lot, but you know, hopefully you all can follow. So I'll solo again. I'll go to the amplitude. Let's say that this one here was too loud. Well, I can sort of draw in this one to be quieter than the rest. Got to wait for it to hit. There it is. Um, so the, yeah, the random, uh, the way it picks things is it will pick pick one of the sounds at random, play it, pick another one at random. It makes sure that it never plays the same sound back to back. So I'd have to play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. I'd have to play on the ninth time around, then this one would play. So that's what that's how that works. Um, so anyway, the what I was going to say was the time-specific amplitude. Well, this allows you to set basically automation based on time. So this means after four seconds of playing, do something at this event. So I'm going to do something very short. So we'll do it after one second. We'll just lower the volume down. So. Do it even shorter here. There we go. So you can see it's still playing, 
but after one second it goes off. And that's multi-timbral as well. So it doesn't matter where I played on the keyboard, it's always going to happen after one second. Gone off. Gone off. Do multiple things at once. If I offset, you'll hear a little better. Let's make it really long here. Longer. And same thing, you can do curve on these things as well. And the time specific, there's one for the amplitude. I'll turn that off. You can do one for pitch as well. So hopefully you're hearing that unlike what was happening here where the pitch was changing depending on the sample that was being played, this is the pitch changing depending on the time that has been playing, that that note has been playing for. So again, it's always happening roughly third of a second in. Whoa. Okay, I think that'll probably do for this video.